sessions, uh, but I believe at the moment we have to start another special session of this program. And before that, I request Honorable Mr. Justice A.M. Ahmadi, former Chief Justice of India, to kindly come and deliver the presidential address. Honorable Justice A.M. Ahmadi. on the dash. This is our room. And friends in the audience. As is usual with gatherings of IOF, there are many books that, that are released. I had not done my morning exercise, which I did here. And I congratulate all the authors for their effort in putting their views together. It's a matter of great pleasure for me to be associated with the Institute of Objective Studies and particularly on, on an occasion like this where it celebrates 30 years of its existence. It has done several programs on a variety of subjects and this is one which touches a very important aspect concerning the citizens of this country. But I am happy to say, and rather proud to say, that India is one country where people of all leading faiths live under the umbrella of the Constitution of India. And this diversity, which India is able to project, is not to be found in any other country. So, so far as we in India are concerned, we treat people belonging to different faiths as equals. And we also appreciate their contribution <coughs> in various fields. In uh, or walks of life in which they have been performing. Diversity by itself brings about 
unequals as equals. And I, for one, do not think that there is a demarcation between equals and unequals. I treat the unequals as those belonging to the Republic of India as contributors to the development of the country and it is, it is the duty of the equals to ensure that the unequals are brought within the fold of equals and treated as such. Treating unequals as different from equals would not be helpful for a unified country. A country which, is, which treats everybody as equals, fraternity, must, we must also treat those who, whom you call unequals. Unequals because of uh, they coming from different walks of life where they are living a life <coughs> which is not looked at like a life led by the equals. We must try to see that they are uplifted and brought within the fold of equals. Now equality is one of the main features of the constitution which in clear words in Article 14 speaks of economic equality. In part 4 of the Constitution, it deals with an, uh, which deals with uh, economic aspects, etc., and which talks of equal protection to everyone, both economic and physical. Even though in the preamble of the Constitution, as well as in Chapter 4, where there are provisions which require to be brought into the constitutional arena, but could not at that point of time be brought into the fundamental rights chapter. Have to be looked up, looked in, not as subordinate uh, to fundamental rights, but as something which have to be given the status of fundamental rights. In article, in part three of the Constitution, fundamental rights have been enumerated. Sometimes, when fundamental rights are violated, 
The remedy is provided by Article 32, which is the last on that, in that chapter. And a responsibility is cast on the Supreme Court of India to enforce the fundamental rights through Article 32 as and when they are violated. But over a period of time, unfortunately I say, over a period of time, this has been ignored. And very often when a petition is moved under Article 32, the Supreme Court, instead of taking up its responsibility under Article 32, says go to the High Court. Now, the power that the High Court has is a very limited power under Article 226 of the Constitution. Whereas the power given to the Supreme Court under Article 32 is a very broad power to enforce it is only through that article that you can enforce a violation of a fundamental right and no other article. Supposing a fundamental right of, of great substance is violated, how are you going to enforce it? There is no provision in the Constitution other than Article 32, which is the last provision in the chapter of fundamental rights. Article 32 itself is a fundamental right and what is required is that, that through that article all the fundamental rights come within the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And any violation of fundamental, any other fundamental right can be enforced only through Article 32. And yet I, I have seen several judgments where the Supreme Court has said go to the court. That's shirking responsibility, if I may put it, as I look at it. Because the Constitution confers on you a responsibility to enforce fundamental rights. And if you do not exercise that jurisdiction, you are virtually negating to yourself a fundamental right which is not something one can appreciate. Therefore, when you have to bring people together to enjoy the fundamental rights, failure in that field can only be repaired by Article 32. And I hope in future, the Supreme Court of India will not hesitate to use Article 32 to enforce a fundamental right which is sometimes you know, violated with impunity as so-called Gaurakshaks did in the course of a spell of period which this country went through. Dr. Manzoor Alam has been coming up with different issues from time to time and I congratulate him for this particular issue that he has brought to the forum which needs very serious consideration. In the Constitution, Part four, unfortunately the word used is state shall endeavor. Now this word endeavor gives the flexibility to the state not to enforce it. And there again, Article 32 would have to be involved. So the importance of Article 32 needs to be understood very clearly. I do not divide the Indian society of equals and unequals. 
in the Mandal Commission uh, uh, decision, to which I was also a party, I disagreed on a particular expression that was used, but unfortunately my disagreement was shown in the footnote and not in the body of the judgment. So, so that it could be seen and shown to be by five judges, whereas it was not so. It's necessary to understand this because it, it went into the footnote. People did not catch it. And they thought I, I, I was also a party because I learned about it when I was told by at, a, at another function. that uh, you are a party to this. I said, no, I wasn't. I, my disagreement is noted in the footnote. Please have a look at the footnote. Then <coughs> there came another footnote where my disagreement was sought to be correlated to another part of the judgment, but I, I, as if I had that in mind, I, I did not have that in mind, I had what in mind is just on that page itself. So this is something which disturbs you. Anyway, we have a country which is wonderful because of its diversity. People belonging to different faiths have been living in this country under the umbrella of the Constitution for now so many years. And without that being a real major difficulty in their coexistence. So coexistence is a theme which is in the Indian society as such. And we live together happily and would live together happily ever after. Thank you.